Hello. Um, I thought I'd do a different sort of video, um, just to give us a quick introduction to our topic. So permutations and combinations. Let's do a very quick um, explanation. So let's start with permutations. We have five competitors, A, B, C, D and E. In a maths competition, we give a prize to the winner only. How many options do we have? Well, either A wins, or B wins, or C wins, or D wins, or E wins. So we've got five options there. Let's extend that, and we're going to build the pattern up. Now let's give a prize to both first and second. Well, how many options do we have? Well, A could win, B could come second. A could win, C could come second. And you'll see here that I've done a sequence here. So there's four ways of A winning with somebody else coming second. Um, there's four ways of B winning with somebody else coming second. Uh, four ways of D winning. So I see winning, four ways of D winning, and four ways of E winning. So what we've got here is, in effect, uh, five winners. Once we pick the five winners, we've only got four people left to come second. And that creates our 20 options. OK, so we started off with five. And now we've got five times four. Third, we give a prize to first, second and third. How many options are there? Well, A could win, B could come second and C could come third. Or A could win, B could come second and D could come third. And if we build up this systematic list, you can see here there's 10 ways that, I'm um, sorry, 2, 4, 6, 12 ways the A wins, there's 12 ways that B wins, 12 ways that C wins, 12 ways that D wins, etc. Yeah. So if we just had a quick think about what we've just seen there, well, we could have five winners. All, any one of the five could win. But once one of those five has won, um, there's only four left to come um, second, and then there's only three left to come third. So we end up with 60 options. OK. These call permutations if we follow this pattern through. And a, there is a formula for it, and it's in your calculator. There will be a button on your ordinary GCSE calculator. What's it actually doing here is it's doing this little calculation here n um, factorial over n minus r factorial. So if we look at the one above, it will be finding 5 factorial and it will be dividing it by. 5 minus 3 factorial. What's factorial? Let's just make sure we understand. Well, that is, in this case, if we had 5 factorial, it's a way of saying 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And in general terms, it's, uh, it's this line above. It's r times r minus 1 times r minus 2, all the way down to times 1. So if we did what we've Going back up here to the top, we'd have 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 on the top. And on the bottom, 5 minus, uh, five minus uh, 3 is 2, so we'd have 2 times 1. So that would cancel out our 2s over here, and we'd be left with our 5 times 4 times 3. So that is how permutations relate. When do we use it? When order is important. Here, it was important who came first and who came second. And immediately we know order is important, we're going to use permutations. OK, let's have a go at combinations, often sometimes called choosing as well. And the difference here is we don't care which order this comes about. So let's see a very similar problem. We've got five candidates for a committee. And the candidates are once again A, B, C, D and E. We have one empty seat, seat sorry, on the committee to fill. How many ways have had for one joiner? Well, either A could join, or B could join, or C could join, or D could join, or E could join. So we're back to five options, as we saw in the permutations. But then it changes when we get to two seats. We've got two empty seats, and we've got for two joiners. Well, it could be A, B. Yeah, join, A could join, and B could join. Now, in the previous one, we were interested as well that it could be B join and A join, but we're not interested in the order now. So in the list we had above, we would cross out 
the um, B joins and then A joins, because we're only interested in the fact it's A and B. Then we can go to AC, AD and AE. And you can see quite a few of our options from above where we had um, five times, four times, three, um, five times four, 20 options, didn't we? In permutations, sorry, permutations have gone down now, haven't they? Because each of these pairs, we've basically halved the number. There's only 10 options because um, BA is the same as AB. So looking quickly at what we did earlier, remember we had five choices for the first one, then four choices for the second one. But then we've divided by two here because AB is the same as BA. Yeah, so we end up with 10. OK. Following a similar sort of line now, um, we had three empty slots here, seats here, and so we want three joiners. If you remember on the lot, when we were looking at permutations, we had a massive number here. We had 60, but there's lots of repetitions here, aren't there? Because ABC appears again as BAC. It, it appears as CAB. Um, can you see how everyone... So we've got quite a few versions there. it's a c b there let's see how many others we've got b c a there and we should have one other six a b so that combination appears six times okay with that idea so as a result when we've just made our short list rather than having our 60 permutations we had above well six of them they can be broke um cut down can't they because they're all repeated six times so that would give us our 10. so can we see um, sorry, I'm in the wrong, wrong place here. Let's whiz down. Yeah, that would be 60. Um, we had 60, all the combina uh, combina permutations above, but it's, each of them are repeated six times. So we've only got 10 now, haven't we? Because we've got our ABC appears once rather than our a ABC, ACB, CBA, BAC, etc. How do we how do we get this six then this divisor? Well, actually, what we had is the same as we had on the top. Pick from five in the first one, four in the second, and three in the third. So that gave us our sixty. But we got divided by six. Well, um, we duplicate twice for the first one and three times for the third one. Um, so therefore, there's our six. Yeah. So what we've got here is sixty divided by six, which equals ten. OK, well, again, these are on your calculator when, um, and these are called combinations. You'll also hear the word choose being used. And this is on your calculator, N choose R. This is the formula that we're using here. Um, N treats total number over N minus R X, um, uh, factorial over R factorial. Apologies, sometimes I'll say shriek rather than factorial. So let's put the example we had in above into this equation, and we would have um, we would have six. So we got uh, five. Shriek on the top, divide by 5 minus 3 factorial, and then we got 3 factorial. Okay. So if we work that one through, we've got, um, excuse me, let's make myself a little more room here, a sec when I'm doing it and when my phone's going off in the background. So here we've got, we have five times four times three times two times one on the top. And then we've got um, our five, we've got our two times one there. And then we're multiplying it by three times two times one. So these ones are gonna cancel out. That two is gonna cancel out with that four and that brings us back there's our 10. Now you will probably recognize these as being um, the values we're seeing in the Pascal's triangle and the binomial factors. Um, so that's why they're the same. Why, why do they appear in the Pascal's triangle and binomial factors? Because the order's not important that we go through this and if you think about it if we are um, 
doing probability and we're going to roll one we're going to roll a dice and we're going to get one six out of a five um so yeah one six out of five rolls where well, it could be the first it could be the second it could be the third it could be the fourth it could be the fifth we don't care which one it is so order is not important so i hope that gives you um just a quick introduction of it go back have a look at the pattern uh, best of luck